Welcome to the Movement PT Coffee Cast, where we sit down and talk about physical therapy, health, and whatever else comes to mind during our coffee infused conversations. What's going on, guys? We have a special episode for you this week. Will and I had the opportunity to go on the Duck Legs podcast and chat it up with the boys. Um, it was an awesome episode. So this is going to be the audio from that podcast. So it was uh, it was hosted on their podcast. We kind of asked them some questions. They asked us some questions. We talked a, talked a lot. Um, we talked about some interesting stuff. I think you guys will really like it. If you haven't checked out the Duck Legs podcast, Head over to iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. Subscribe, leave them a review. Those guys are putting out great content. Um, they keep it light, but they also get down and talk about the stuff that needs to be talked about in the profession. Uh, so we really appreciate them having us on. We appreciate sitting down, drinking coffee, and talking ducks with the Duck Legs podcast. We hope you guys enjoy this one. Let us know what you think. And more importantly, if you enjoyed this episode, share it with one other person. Head over to iTunes, subscribe, drop us a review. It helps us grow our podcast, guys. We appreciate you. Always enjoy. We're, we're all doctors now. <laughs> That's <laughs> idiots. Um, it, are we gonna? Is it, are we gonna keep it funny? Yeah. I mean, we're Siri, we're doctors. <laughs> Are you so, can doctors be funny? And that's the question. We like this cow. It's kind of one of those things, it's like the duck. You know, you see a duck in the water, right? The duck looks like it's cool, but the duck's freaking working hard under the water. Wow, I work it hard, work it hard. That's how our place is. We look cool, but we're working hard. You are now listening to the Duck Legs Podcast. Now we are doctors of physical therapy, still bringing the raw content, not holding anything back. We're going to laugh, we're going to love, we're going to cry, we're going to touch each other in some very sensitive places. The bullshit that you're about to hear is definitely not any kind of medical advice, and you should not listen to this at all. This is for entertainment purposes only, and we say that loosely. Because we'll, we'll get into some shit here. Like earlier uh, this past week, um, I'm at a standard outpatient orthopedic clinic. One of my evals, motor vehicle accident, coming with some uh, tinnitus, right? Ringing in the ear. And kind of a stereotypical case of not, she didn't feel listened to by her uh, you know, primary care doc. She's, she's mentioned the ringing in the ear. She has some neck pain, some back pain too, but some constant ringing uh, that she can't seem to get relief from. Uh, for some reason, she didn't. The doc didn't recommend her to go see an orthopedic specialist. Um, I'm not sorry, a uh, an, an ear an ear specialist, a vestibular specialist. Um, she just got the standard script referral. They didn't even do any C spine imaging, right? Which is still blowing my mind. I think she had she might have had some low back imaging, but nothing cervical. So that that was just a huge red flag and. And I was, I was the first person to be like, Hey, let's see if we can change some of this ringing in your ears with some cervical movement. And sure enough, we did, um, refer her out to, to go get some imaging and yeah, see a vestibular specialist, but just that, like we all talk about, right. Actually listening to people and not just shrugging them off and, and seeing how can we help the craziest shit that comes through our door. Even if we're like, I don't, I don't, I'm not a vestibular specialist. Trace would have known what to do because he's a vestibular man, but it's just like, all right, let's, we'll have a conversation. That's a, at least what, that's the, the smallest thing that I can do. Have a conversation, see if we can make it musculoskeletal related at all. Sure enough, we, we were able to change it, which just blew her mind because I was the first person to be like, hey, turn your head like this. Oh, it changes somewhat? Cool. Let's use all this information for when you go see your, uh, you know, your specialist, your vestibular specialist. But anyway, that's my rant from this week. Sorry, guys. No, so man. was your like thought process then like let's just kind of try to gather as much information as you can so that you can kind of relay that uh for the next person that actually knows <laughs> <laughs> vestibular stuff yeah it was 
Yeah, that's my thought process was so like she broke down crying like oh, man. pretty soon into the eval. So it was it was a very emotional um, experience for her because she she retold the whole story of her 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 car accident, a traumatic car accident here on like one of the deadliest uh, interstates here in Texas. And she made it out alive. But um, no, traumatic story. She broke down crying in the eval, which I wasn't ready for. Right, It was like my, my last eval before lunch. So I was uh. thinking more about lunch. <laughs> yeah. so we're dealing with some heavy shit. But um, now she broke down crying. And I'm like, fuck, I got to go find where the Kleenex is. I'm new to this clinic. So I'm like asking all the technicians, like, where the fuck are the Kleenexes? Um, where are the <laughs> So, so yeah, my, my thought process was like, let me just make this person give her calm, give her an opportunity to vent, just unload, get that cry out that she's been holding on to because she's been through some traumatic shit that I can't even relate to. Um, and like, yeah, let's just see if we can, we can help her however we can with my little bit of uh, tinnitus vestibular knowledge. Um, and that was, that was like all she needed at that that day like, okay somebody listen to me i feel confident now because i can change this weird uh ringing in my ears that i thought was constant and unchanging um but yeah so yeah they don't prepare you for that man that that breaking down of the crying stuff jeez yeah you know no one, no one warns you about that shit then you're just no. like oh you gotta try to respond to it right and like make them feel as comfortable as possible. I feel like that, that's why like the communication aspect so key, man. Like yeah. to have that's people what, that have the ability to do it. And that's what I love about y'all's posts. You know, y'all are always on that communication over everything and, and just having, building that alliance right before we get into anything else that's too, too nerdy or too heady or too clinical practice guidelines, right? Just have a conversation with somebody. Um, and just kind of, I was going, can you hear? All right, Tyler. Oh, take, we'll, we'll hit you. How now, brown cow? You plugged in there, buddy. <laughs> right there. Other one. There you go. We, Hello. Got the, we got the headphone splitter in now, boys. Oh, we're getting real. We're getting this real. is like a conference. Like, never been on with so many people. You're welcome. This is <laughs> so, so many ducks. <laughs> so many ducks. So many. So much. So much coffee being drunk. Um, was that a water bottle? Are y'all drinking coffee right now? Or oh just, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There well, you go. I got my minion mug. <laughs> I like that mug there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jack, here we go. <laughs> I got it from my girlfriend's 97-year-old grandma. She's like, you want this? She's like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> is, that, is that the same grandma that was shitting on your bartending skills? It was the exact same one. Told me my drinks were too weak. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> if you didn't know, Trace is a professional bartender as well as an amazing PT. Dang, man. He's working on it. <laughs> I'm sure that, that you, you're probably good at talking to people then. Yeah, usually like just the basic happy hour conversations. Usually <laughs> fight through them. And and you're you're about to drop your own podcast too with another of your homies called Whiskey Docs, which is going to be Ooh. just conversations over over a bottle of whiskey or what? How's that oh, going? Yeah, just do it. It's going pretty well. We released the first two episodes. Um, seems pretty well. My other guy has never really been on a podcast or anything before, so the first episode was a little hit or miss, but yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Just, we got a couple episodes saved up. We're releasing them on Wednesdays at like happy hour time. So between five and six, four and six, whatever. Nice. There you go. Yeah. That's and you guys cool. Just, like you guys just talking to like other physios and stuff too? Is that more? We're going to be. So we're starting the yeah. first couple with like just our clinical cases kind of talking through probably like five or six episodes um, of just like us talking, getting to know everyone and then starting to pull on guests as we get like going a little bit. Nice. Yeah. There's a couple people down in Austin that are like whiskey specialists that aren't, they're not related to PTs at all, but they have like a YouTube channel. It's pretty big. So I'm going to try and see if I can get them on to talk. Like oh, yeah. stuff. That'd be hype. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to like explore into another domain. That's not just physio, you know, Yeah. get yourself in like another kind of like, just, I don't know, learning some other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going like day to day from clinic to like, I don't know how people do more PRN work on the weekends and it's just like physio seven days a week. It's like, I can't, I can't do that. There's gotta be something else going on. And, yeah. and what is that for y'all for, for Will and Dalton? What's, what's your outlet? Cause you know, you have the movement, the movement PTs, right? That's, that's the powerful brand you have, but there's any, anything else that y'all love outside of, of healthcare or outside of fitness. That's like, that's my jam. Besides coffee. Ooh. Ooh. And amazing beards. 
Well, I don't got no beard. <laughs> one, one, one amazing beard. One dirty well, neck beard. That's the thing is that takes up a lot of my time growing my beard. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> but uh, uh, for me, I like, uh, I like eating, you know? So, like, <laughs> me and my girlfriend, honestly, like, that's how we kind of bonded when we first, like, started hanging out. We just would, like, drink coffee at coffee shops and we just, like, make epic meals, mo- yes. mostly her. And I just kind of like, you know, I, I, I'm, what do I do? I, sh- I, um, do the cheese. I grade the cheese. Yeah. That's my job. Uh, so <laughs> that's my contribution. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, man, I don't, outside of God, that's a good question. I think I need to do some more things with my life other than physio and fitness and coffee. But uh, I've been dabbling in, I've been watching a lot of uh, streaming, like video game streaming, man. It's a big, it's a big thing. Like, You're uh, one of those. Yeah, I'm one of those guys, man. I, I wasn't until my brother, my brother started streaming on Twitch. So I was like, all right, I'll check this out. And then I started watching <laughs> a couple of like creators that like put out like Fortnite stuff and like Call of Duty stuff. And it's actually pretty hype, man. Isn't that such a wild experience? Because now they're actually building like arenas for this shit, right? Oh, bro, it's it's gonna be nuts, man. E- esports is gonna be the craziest shit ever in a, in like a year, guaranteed, man. And I know there's there's some physios out there like like F Scott, if y'all are familiar with, who's trying to capitalize on that and 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 say, hey, let me let me work on your thumbs. Oh, let me make sure oh, you're. Yo, your that's hands. that's legit, man. I swear. So like, we need to we need to capitalize on this on this esports movement here. Yeah, man. There's big mo- there's big money flowing into it. Like big name people are putting money and buying like these gaming teams and stuff. Like Drake, man. Drake just got in on a team. That's right. Uh, yeah, hundred thieves. How how heavy do y'all claim Drake hailing from? Are y'all from the six? Are y'all just from near the six? No, I'm I'm not from I'm not from there. Will's closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm within like I can hop on the the train and get there in like. 40 minutes or so yeah yeah, yeah we'll, cl- but- we'll claim them though yeah okay <laughs> we gotta we got him and justin bieber man we, we gotta take those guys and run that's with them. that's yeah that's the winning team right there <laughs> yeah awesome. what what else is because i've never been to canada i i'd, I'd love to go um it's it sounds like it's a, a, a more of a pleasant time than we're having here in the states right now particularly <laughs> um what's uh what where, where, where do y'all live actually specifically in, in, in the beautiful i don't the beautiful I don't, country the beautiful yeah. country of canada it's, it's a small country, country it's small so like we're all close <laughs> but uh i live uh i live like about two hours from toronto um in like a, a town or a city called london ontario mm-hmm. so it's uh that's not where i'm originally from so i came here to do school uh like my master's uh and then i i ended up staying here i'm originally from like a small town like two hours outside of London that has like 3000 people. So I, I didn't grow up in much civilization. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just snow, maybe a couple igloos, you know, um, that's about it. Dalton's like farm boy strong. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> Bail and hay when I was like, when I was eight tipping cows, I'm soft. I'm, I'm from like the city. So, but no, I'm, I'm from like, you know, just outside of Toronto uh place called burlington ontario mm-hmm. uh, sort of like in between toronto and niagara falls so you know i guess you know those are two destinations you you might want to go to if you're in yeah around this neck of the woods for sure for sure <laughs> Have you ever been to the states yeah yeah i've been there a couple of times. so i live so where i live it's like right across from detroit so oh, yeah. I, I used to go to Detroit often, like catch some games there, not to hang out, but like to go, <laughs> to go watch, <laughs> to go watch some games. But yeah, I've been to Detroit. Uh, I've been to Chicago before, Boston, a couple places. Oh yeah. yeah. Those are all the hot spots. You really don't, you don't need to go below the Mason Dixon line really. Anything, anything <laughs> below Boston in the South where we're at, it's kind of just, you know. It's Yo, just- I, I heard Texas is nice though, man. I'll come down to Texas one yeah, time. Yeah. So come to Austin, man. We'll, we'll yeah. house you. Yeah. We'll have some fun down here. But it's <laughs> it's so cool just knowing y'all from online and from Instagram that it it kind of removes all the barriers, right? We all feel like we're part of the same community, even though we're in two totally different parts of the world. And uh it's really it's it's like what, thirty five degrees over here and we're freezing our balls off. But no, I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> it's not not pleasant. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about it before. Like it's it's freezing here right now. Yeah, we just got hit hard. Like what how, like was like me, 30, yeah. 40 degrees some, out there yeah it's like 40 
Well, I mean, I get like with, we we go, still- we're really bad at translating. Yeah, like me and uh, Dalton were talking about this uh, before. Like, uh, it, like we have no concept of what Fahrenheit is no. uh, at a certain point, but it's like negative twenty five degrees Celsius with the wind chill. Tyler's gonna do the, the live yeah. conversion on that. I guess. We'll oh, here we go. <laughs> live math. I'm whoever that guy is on the Joe Rogan show that's always looking. At Fat us. checks, bro. Bring it up. That's yeah. young Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> negative thirteen. Fahrenheit. Shit. Yeah, bro. Jeez. That's pretty. That's pretty awful. Yeah. How do you do things out there in that weather? How do you? You, you don't do much, just shut man. down. You don't do much, right? You just like, God. Yeah. Well, honest. like oh. today, I was going to the gym and I like got out and I was in my shorts and I had to like get all the snow off. Like that's actually like a common like Canadian thing is you just kind of like, you're just like, ah, I don't want to like get all ready. You know, I'm going to the gym. I want to just get into the gym as fast as possible. Yeah. And, and you're just going to tough it out. So you got to wear shorts. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't mess around. The movement PTs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yo, but what about you guys? How did you guys all meet? Was it school? Uh, yeah, Tyler and I went to the same school, same program down here in Austin. And and we, again, met Trace online. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Facebook. He kind of reached out to us. And he's like, hey, I listen to your dumb podcast. He's like, we're like hey, do you want to be a part of this dumb shit? And he's like, yeah, I'll be a part. <laughs> so pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Just like the beauty of, of social media, man. It's connecting with people. Yeah. Connecting with mofos, man. No, it's so cool. Like that's something that we constantly are blown away by. Like, like we just talked with the physio tutors. Yes. And you're just sitting there, and you're like, like I've seen these guys online. Yeah. And they're so far away. You know, it's like a totally different place there. And they've helped me pass like all oh, my yes. tests, <laughs> and they're they're so cool and chill. They are so cool. They're Jack too, man. They're, they're so, so fucking strong. They're tall and strong. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah, they're they're all like they're both like. <laughs> yeah. Three, that bro. Andreas was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm six, I'm six one, but in everywhere else, I'm short." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah, I guess the impressions. <laughs> the two, two amazing guys for sure. Speaking yeah, of impressions, do yeah. you guys, you know that like just gonna send it thing. Do you guys just like did no. when that was a hot thing? Did you guys do that all over the place? It's a Canadian. Just gonna, like, just gonna send it. Yeah, <laughs> nah, that I wasn't, I wasn't about that. You weren't you know, about it? No, I wasn't, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely heard it before. Yeah, it's a, it's a Canadian thing, but we didn't pick it up. We just drink our Tim Hortons, man. That's all we do. There you okay. go. Okay. Man, one of one of our favorite professors here in Austin is from Canada. That's right. And, yeah, he's – shout out to Alan Besselink. He's been – he's moved, he moved to Austin a while back. But um, it was that thing where – in Canada, you have direct access, right? Full direct access to uh, to physical therapy. Yep. So he, le- he left Canada, went, came to Texas, where it's the, the most restricted access. And he's probably one of our biggest proponents for, for fighting that cause. So um, he really took a hit moving down to the States. But I'm so glad to have him. Yeah. It's badass. Well, Canadians are so easy to like. I don't know. They're like such cool people. They are. They're I don't so- get it. It's, it's wild. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never had a negative experience with a Canadian. Most I, li- I like most Canucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good to hear, man. That means we're in a good place for yeah. sure. Americans, on the other hand, so, <laughs> well, you guys are chill. Yeah, we're we're chill. I've I've oftentimes thought about being an expat and just moving to Canada. What what you call it? An ex an ex expatriate? Expat. Yeah, oh, that's you the ever, first time I got that. Yeah, hey, I, well, I think. We'll, uh, We'll welcome you in. Yeah, man, come on down. Damn, look at that. You got a place easy, to stay, bro. Easy, man. Yo, bring, bring your coat. You might need it. Like, <laughs> you know, you, do you own a coat? <laughs> I don't like a light coat. I, light I've, coat. I've never – I don't think I've ever experienced below uh, negative. You know, yeah, you're negative. from you're from Baton Rouge, New yeah, Orleans, I'm, right? Yeah, you're I'm like, from Louisiana. You're so – you don't know shit about that. <laughs> Yo, you wouldn't, be, know, you so. wouldn't be ready, bro. You wouldn't <laughs> be ready, bro. It, it would be pretty – it would be pretty difficult – Uh being here in the cold like I, i've had some people come here uh during like these kind of times who haven't really experienced it before and like they're wearing like their coats inside and stuff you yeah know? 
Oh, I, yeah, I do. God. But it's the same thing, though, uh, in reverse. Like, I went down uh, – I was telling Trace before, um, like, I played baseball, and I, I used to, like, travel in the U.S., and uh, I was in Oklahoma, and it was, like, 105 degrees or something, and I was, like, dying. Yeah. Like, I was not a fully functional human being, you know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it's like. Yeah. This is <laughs> well, welcome to my side, Will. <laughs> degrees, humid as fuck. Just everywhere you sit, there's a nasty, sweated ass stain. <laughs> Just those are my oh, school man. buses. <laughs> Back in the, the those day. are my school buses. Hey, I'm looking at your Instagram thing, and maybe you guys have addressed it before. Or we've already talked about it. Who, where did the Where did the logo come? That's a dope logo. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's actually something we haven't really talked about uh, before, to be honest. But um, so, so my cousin does a little bit of graphic design. And, and so I kind of like had a bit of a vision um, and like messaged him about it. Like the idea is it's like obviously like the T and the M are connected, right? So like Dalton and I were all about like connection. Yeah. You know? So there, there you go. There you go. Uh, and, and it's also um, – if you look closely, it kind of looks like a guy squatting, you oh. know, like in a in a small a kind of subtle way. I see yeah. it. I see it. Yeah, you, yeah it's grass. It, they, I don't Ass have that squat deck, but yeah, yeah. front squat. So for, yeah, it's a goblet squat, front squat. Exactly. So that's kind of like the movement portion of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, we just wanted something simple. If you want to, if you want to laugh at our original logo, you can scroll all the way to the bottom. That was a ghetto one that we that Will crafted up on yeah. on his iPad back in the day. Uh, let's yeah. see, let's see what the first post was. with a nice little shield. A shield. I wonder if oh, I right. we, seen that. We transitioned. We transitioned like twice, I think. Oh yeah, like, but that's the thing. Like this, doing all the media stuff has really kind of forced us to learn other things. Like. I've learned way more about like producing content and stuff. And right. now I do a little bit of like graphic design stuff myself. And I've kind of learned that. Uh, and I never would have done that or realized that I really enjoyed that if I didn't, uh, if I didn't like take a bit of a risk and make some, some crappy stuff to start with, you know, that's how we learn. That's how we grow, man, for sure. Yeah. And, I, and we're, we have the, uh, the old shield up here right now. It, <laughs> you know, it looks good. It's, it's a good, uh, not as good as what you got now with the spot man, but yeah. <laughs> but and and talk about too the just the consistency that you guys have been at. Your first post was way back in October first, twenty seventeen on Instagram. Yeah, um, look at that. Yeah, yeah, I know it's been crazy. When we first, so we first started like coming up with the idea of starting an Instagram page. You good, Trace? Jeez, you <laughs> lost him. <laughs> it's getting too cold out there. <laughs> um we 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 came we were trying to come up with what we wanted to do and we came up with actually a totally different name we were going to be like pro act therapy or something crazy like that yeah. and uh that didn't end up going down so we we rebranded before we even started um and then when we when we eventually started coming up with the idea we, we made it a goal to like post one post a day for a year like that was our that was our goal so we we started out where we just crafted up like a bunch of posts like for a whole like month we would yeah. do it like a month at a time to like get to get everything in um in advance and then once we got good at like or comfortable with creating content we kind of stopped prepping like so much um and now we kind of just prep week i would say like week by week um but we still try to keep it pretty consistent like we try to post every day i think we've missed like maybe one or two days mm -hmm. uh but so to all, to all those all those folks just starting out do you recommend plan out all your content a month in advance uh, I would say if you're gonna start like if you have the it depends on your goals right like if your goal is to like try and create if you're trying to create a brand or trying to push something then I would and you really want it to grow like in order to get it to grow on Instagram like you got to be consistent like just with the algorithms and all that jazz like not that we know a whole lot about that but we know if you post every day that it's just a better opportunity for for them to like see your stuff and people to see your stuff right so um, and then planning ahead to just if you're busy, like we were in school, like we we're students, right? So like we didn't have time to like just create it. Like, so we just would go and film a bunch of stuff, um, come back, like edit the videos and just have them like ready to go. Yep. Sure. And I think like, you know, like you don't have to do anything, right? Like 
I think you just kind of decide like, is this something I want to do? Like, do I like uh, putting this stuff out? And if you do, like, it's not going to be that hard to, to go and do it. You just got to be committed and you got to realize like what, what you want to do. And me and Dalton really wanted to make an impact. And so we decided that's how we're going to do it, but there's no blueprint, you know, Mm -hmm. you can, you don't have to post every day. Uh, if there's some stuff you just want to put out there, like people are still going to see it and, uh, and, and you can still connect with people through social media without making a post every day. So, you know, you don't have to follow our kind of method, like how we did it, like can do whatever you want. Do you have any people that reach out to you in the DMS and they say, Hey guys, (laughs) I love your content, but I really don't know how to say your brand. Like it's the MVMT (laughs) that stump anybody (sighs) that they don't understand. That's an abbreviation for movement or no, I don't think, I don't think I've ever gotten that yet. I've no, not really, but we, we have tried to change our Facebook. Like we don't do that much on Facebook right now, but it's the movement, like just the word, Mm -hmm. like the actual word. (laughs) And they won't let us change it. So like, we're trying to be the MDMT, like just make it simple, but, uh, they won't let us change it for some reason. Yeah. I don't know, man. I got to talk to Mark. Yeah. Hit him up, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to get a hold. boy up. He's he's still probably going to be in trouble with the government over here, so that might yeah. be why. <laughs> yeah, he's not getting back. He's a little busy. He's he's got people chomping down. On him. <laughs> but um, what's what's the most fun that y'all are having right now at this point of the movements? Is that how y'all say y'all, it's the movement? Is that the movement? You, yeah, yeah. The movement. What's the most fun y'all are having right now? I would say for me, I think the podcast has been the most, the most fun. Like it's probably like the best thing we did with our brand, I think was start the podcast. Cause like, okay. it's just allowed us to like connect with so many people, um, have like crazy, like just crazy conversations over coffee, you know, and just the, the medium of podcasting is, um, is awesome because like you can just sit down and just have a conversation. I think that's a lost art in today's Mm -hmm. day in like all realms. So to be able to sit down and talk with like people like, you know, like Steph and Zach and all the other people that we've talked to, it's just, it's, it's pretty surreal. It's so easy too. It's yeah. That's a crazy part. There's no, like you were saying before, there's no barriers anymore, man. You can do whatever you want. Yep. And selfishly, selfishly, it was a good opportunity for us to just like talk to people that we were like, thought were cool. Yeah, dude. You that's know? the exact same way we start off. It's yeah. Like it's a real sleazy way to network. Super yeah. easy. Yeah. You know, it's and you're more likely this is for like your harder guests, right? You're more likely to hit up somebody and be like, Hey, um, I have a podcast. Would you like to come on and promote some of your shit? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Weingroff, instead of like, Hey, can I talk to you on the phone for an hour? Right. You know? And then your students, right? You're like, Oh, I'm just like, come on, man, like I'm yes. a student I'm just trying to <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> Try to learn, man. <laughs> yeah. You gonna turn down a little student? <laughs> what an asshole but yeah that's that's for sure the, our same motivation that we had yeah what about you will what are you having the most fun doing man growing your beard well that's oh, always, look at that beard. always a good time <laughs> look at that beard. <laughs> i think like uh i agree like the podcast is just so much fun the, the fact that you can reach out to anybody like uh, like i actually just shot out like i've gotten more i've tried to just think of ridiculous people i could reach out to you know what I mean? So like the other day I sent an email to NASA. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yes. I'm like, there's this guy and he makes, uh, he figured out a way to make coffee in space. So I'm like, well, okay. I want to <laughs> have this guy on the podcast. Cause I also want to know about like, you know, what's it like physically going to space? Like that's, yeah. cool. uh, I haven't heard back yet, <laughs> but Check out a, I don't know if you're familiar with the healthcare education transformation podcast. Yep. Those guys, they, they interviewed a dude from NASA. Did I mean, they? Yeah. So that'd be the guy to look out for. I can't, I don't know his name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sounds that's, good. That'd be the end. You just, you just need a couple <laughs> degrees of separation from NASA and then you're in. Yeah, we need that NASA connection, man. <laughs> yes. But like, what you know, they're, sorry, oh. what were you going to say? No, go ahead, Will. I was just going to say like, there's so many aspects that we enjoy, like, and, and it kind of just allows me and Dalton to explore things that we like doing. Like there's no secret. We really like uh coffee. 
So that's been something we've been kind of pursuing. Yeah, we might uh, drop out of physio and just open yeah. a coffee shop. Maybe. Good. <laughs> yeah. Or just combine both. Yeah, that's – well, that's the plan, man. That's the plan. Dream. That'd be just yeah. like an amazing thing. I was always thought about opening a coffee shop on campus, how much money you'd make yeah. from all the students. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it seems appropriate to talk about it a little bit here, but Dalton and I have actually been uh, doing that. You know, we have a little bit of a connection with somebody uh, where he's from. So we're looking at uh, trying to get our uh, coffee blend rolling soon. Yes. Yeah. Stay, yeah. stay tuned. Own- <laughs> Are you going to go for like a dark blend, a light blend? Well, I think it's going to be a little bit lighter. What would you say, Dalton? Yeah, I would say that. I think we're trying to keep it like a nice, easy cup for people to drink. So everyone, like all coffee people will appreciate it, you know? Yeah. I think like this, the, let's just say like the coffee snobs, which like we're, I would say we're not there. Like I'm not that skillful no. in my coffee, mm-hmm. but um, those people will probably be like, ah, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with it. But like the people they who can like, still drink it though. Yeah, they can. But like the, the people who just drink like, you know, the average coffee, I think will really appreciate it. And then even those people that like to mess around with it a little bit more, um, will also enjoy it. So like, we're kind of going for the original blend is just going to be a nice, easy one for everyone to drink. And then we can kind of branch off after that with some like, so maybe different kinds of blends. Oh, look yeah. at that. Oh. Well, let's, go to, let's go to that screen. What does that show? What does that say? That is, <laughs> oh, that's not a nudie. You, you might not be able to read the like the little stuff, but that's okay. That's, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So awesome. Yeah. So we're excited. We'll see what happens. So that's fun. You know, we just get like – we just – we started right from the beginning. That's something we've wanted to do, you know? So we yeah. just kind of thought we, we were talking, we had um, Danny Lair uh, from Caffeine and Kilos on. Yeah. And we were asking him about like, how, how do you go about it? And he was like, it's not that hard. You know, here's what you can do. So we're like, all right, I guess we'll reach out to somebody. You know? Somebody with the beans. And, yeah, and, man. The beans. Are you guys not doing anything like crazy as a backstory with the beans? Cause like I've seen some whiskeys and stuff where it's like, the barrel was something different. I'm, I'm picturing you guys like <laughs> these are the beans in the bag that Dalton and Will both squatted. They had them like on yes. the back, <laughs> yeah. the squat rack kind of coffee. Yes. yes. Oh man, we should do that. It's got the gym sweat in the beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, I, I think we are gonna have some like uh, you know like interesting little kind of like uh, some sort of surprises like that'll come with it. Uh, still in the works a little bit, but. Like toys yeah. inside of the coffee bean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. like at the bottom of the bag, man. You get, you get a. That's a, awesome. A golden you can make ticket. A coffee bag be like a kettlebell that you can like you can dual use it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. nice, nice. That's good. Um, that would be epic, team guys. Yeah, I want. I want to ask you guys a question though. Like the one thing that uh, me and Will have really realized, like with starting the social media and the podcast and everything, is like, you know, if you really want to go after something and do something that you're passionate about. Um, there's really, there's really no reason to not do it. You know, like you have all the access to the information. Have you guys like started to gain more confidence in your abilities to like just start something new um, since you guys started the podcast? That's a great question, Dalton. I think I'll go ahead and take that first since I, it's that question really, really speaking to me. I think so, man. I think it's from, from putting yourself out there and from taking like a couple of, couple of uh, social media courses from a couple of folks it does give you that confidence to, to, to not be afraid about what people would say if you have anybody that, that would critique you and to just have fun. And I think that translated, translated for me also in the real world when you're face-to-face to kind of go through that same um, kind of thought pr- process of like, look, I'm going to say whatever comes to my head. My, my, my filter is – I'll still have a filter, but it's way low because I, I just want to kind of – project that authenticity and and realness whether it's on instagram or whether i'm doing an eval right like if i need to go grab some kleenex from somebody i'm gonna like pause and i'm you're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna let we're gonna put all our shit right there on the table yeah and it's gonna smell it's gonna be stinky (laughs) but it's gonna be real as fuck (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's what it's all about man the realness no i would i would agree with that though i think that um what I started to realize is people appreciate that shit though. Like yeah, they, they appreciate you to be being honest and open and kind of being real with them. I think like 
what sometimes tends to happen. And even in my experience is like you get into this situation with a healthcare professional and you, they're always held on that higher standard, right? Which, you, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but that, that person on the other side might not feel like comfortable. And the second you make them like feel comfortable, like what I've started to realize is like the huge switch, man, and how they respond, how they react to you, even how, man, even how they feel, let's say like their pain at that time, you know, it's just like, you can see it like change right away on their face, you know, in their, in their reactions. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Cause that's the buy-in, right? That's the most important thing. And if you don't get that, like no matter how good of a clinician you are, whatever protocols you follow, it doesn't mean shit because the person doesn't like you. Or they don't yeah. believe in what you're selling. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's still sales, right? It's still, it's all yeah. sales. What we do, mm-hmm. even though we, we, some people hate that shit. Yeah. So can't deny it. Can't deny it. Yeah. I think like what you were talking about at the beginning with your little, like your case that you had and stuff too, like just sometimes, well, often, you know, like we don't really know uh, what's going on, you know, like, especially if there's a long, long history yeah. there. And I think something that Dalton and I, like a common thing we've gotten from people is just like in that situation, you just got to hear those people. You have to, because there's so much there. You're not going to make like a huge drastic change right away. Like we're sometimes taught in school, you know, it's like, you got to make a change. You got to, uh, whether you're changing pain or range or whatever it is, uh, sometimes that's not really that realistic. And the biggest, most effective thing you can do is just, just chill and listen. Yeah. And then maybe like, on that note, maybe you do make a change in that person's mindset, right? Like you give them some hope and positivity. And so they're not like, you know what, going in, I thought this was a tumor or something way more uh, malignant. But now after talking to you and talking about possibilities, I have a much better outlook on the possibilities because you gave me some hope. For sure. For sure. And some coffee. Shout out to the Movement PT's coffee. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the beans that, that Dalton and Will used to front squat. <laughs> beans are, are located right in their back pockets <laughs> so it's, it's a very sweat juices for about two hours right in the cold <laughs> negative uh, 13 degrees fahrenheit cold uh frozen sweat frozen in the beans and you can buy them where where guys where are you selling them uh, nowhere yet, yet. <laughs> nowhere right <laughs> dm them on instagram hit them up so you heard it in the duck legs podcast episode for sure that's awesome that's right oh, let me know let me know when y'all are selling them man i'm gonna get like five bags dope Dalton's still waiting for his uh his duck oh, legs. Man. Yo, I'm pissed. <laughs> so I ordered that shirt and I'm, I was like, oh, I want it for the podcast. I'm like, that would be sick. So I'm tracking it and it's in Canada, across the border. Yeah. It's in, Canada. it's in London. I'm like, I'm like, all right, let's go. It'll be here in time. I get a notification. It's like your your uh, shirt has been delivered. They sent it back to Tampa, man. I don't even know how it got where, <laughs> how it, why it's in Tampa. I don't know what happened. But like, ducks flying down south <laughs> yeah, oh, no. and i'm wow. just like i'm like no and so I, I have to wait and see i haven't i haven't heard from them yet about yeah what uh, we'll have to send you another one man it just you turned on your ass and went to tampa god just bizarre and it was, in, <laughs> it was i saw it delivered and i'm like oh yes and then your your shipment has delivered in tampa i'm like oh all right who is no god no <laughs> great todd doing our shirts um what size do you wear though man large large that large uh sweater i got the t-shirt i got the, oh, t-shirt. the t-shirt yeah oh i thought you got a sweater no nah, t-shirt yeah we'll, we'll hook that up for you man we'll get that yeah I'm sure we'll, we'll, some heads are gonna roll fucking with our t-shirts yeah, <laughs> yeah man. how did you guys come up with the name duck legs yeah you want to tell you want to take that that's one you. that's me that's you yeah, so there was this quote, um, Jacob Broad, I think, or Broad, I don't, I've never heard of this author before. I, some, I think it was Greg Todd, actually, that he came on one of our earlier podcasts before we even had a name, and he dropped that quote of, you, sh- you should be like a duck, you know, uh, you should be like a duck, calm up top, working like the hell underneath the water. That's what, that's what our team's like. And then he went into talking about his own team. I'm like, yo, that, we were, that's a dope quote. And yeah. Todd and I were thinking about names for the podcast. And I was like, what if we use, what if we like use a name centered around that quote? And we just like, we, we threw out a bunch of like shitty, horrible names, like Pond Wander or some weird like shit. And then <laughs> we just like said duck legs. 
And then we're like, oh, that's dumb. That's dumb enough to work. Yeah. And then and then just based off how stupid it sounds, we're like, no, we like that. I love it. So unique. And it's kind of like mirrors how you got to be as a PT, ideally. You know, you got to be calm on the surface, but you got to be hustling and like really Mm -hmm. thinking. And not knowing what the fuck is going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no, that's totally, you'll, you're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to be, yeah. I don't know. Oh, you're, you're hearing a constant ringing in your ears. That's non-changing. Yeah. And you're coming here for this. Awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> have you and tried squats? Is real. Have you try, yeah. yeah. Have you tried deadlifting yet? Come out here. We'll get you deadlifting. Sure. Oh, oh, you don't work out at all. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Hmm. Awesome. So you're saying we're starting with their bands. Okay. <laughs> well, here's a yellow. Um, like you, you guys podcast obviously is a little bit of different vibe, which like we appreciate it. And you guys had some pretty like awesome guests on the show. What, uh, like, what is your overall like vision or impact, you know, that you guys are trying to make like with the podcast? Cool. Trace, what do you think, buddy? I think that's what we're still trying to figure out a little bit. Good, good answer. <laughs> That's, that's real, yeah. I think, you know, it started off with us just kind of like what we all talked about before, right? Networking, real cheap way to network, real easy way to meet some people. I think it's still that. I've always, I'm a, such a big fan of, uh, of all forms of comedy. And, you know, growing up, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart was a big uh, influence on me. So I, I love to get to a, a space where, um, you know, we, whether it's, anything we do as far as branded videos or content or just, you know, the podcast, it's still a place where people can go uh, in that physical therapy niche for humor, for, um, for lighthearted interviews, for cursing, just again, keeping it real, just, just having that kind of raunchy um, on un, uh, unfiltered uh, comedy or unfiltered uh, conversations that people can have. And then also I'd like, I'd love to start doing more like truth to power speaking or just just breaking down um news topics current events in a um simple way for um for pts but even i'd, I'd like to branch out to as have had that go towards more of the public to do yeah. some, some general public education that'd be that's the dream goal to be kind yeah. of like a neil degrasse tyson or, or john stewart of pt for uh for the for the people yeah get them listen <laughs> to something that's entertaining yeah. and also educational or uh, who's the reading rainbow guy? Yeah, he's, what's I don't his know name? If he's entertaining. Oh. But, uh, I'd that, love to be that guy. Wouldn't that be cool? To Miss, be that yeah, dude? be him or Mister Rogers. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, yeah, I got you. the led the greatest of all time. Who does? Who wouldn't want to be the Mister Rogers of physical therapy? You know what? I'm coming out here. Oh. Next to Will and Dalton, we're gonna we're gonna shoot for that. I want to be the Mister Rogers of fucking physical therapy, and I already <laughs> failed because you would never say fuck. <laughs> I've, already, I've already failed guys oh, it's, it's, like, I've already it's done it's done yeah you know it's written in stone now yeah and we, were just, we were just talking about um this on the, on the other uh my girlfriend would just mention this quote um shout out to laura over there typing away one of one of mr rogers uh most powerful quotes is if it's mentionable it's manageable have you all heard of that one no before and it's it's basically just it, it goes against people that just bottle their shit in and they're not authentic they don't they they have that those little insecurities that they're too afraid to mention or even speak out in, into the public or share it with somebody but when you go and, and you say hey you know i tyler i just want to let that you <laughs> i don't have to let you know but yes. i really want to work through the fact that i still wet my bed even in grad school that's okay you know man. and then it's and it, it removes that fear from it. it it's it's not something that i was hidden or afraid of now now we can work through it and now we can tyler can give me you know a, a hydration plan of where you look at when 8 30 you got to stop these liquids buddy got it dude yeah. and we've been working on that for like six that. weeks now and it's yeah. been, i've been making a lot of great progress so <laughs> that's impressive yeah thanks guys no i think that's important though like i think again we go back to that that realness right but i think a lot of pressure gets put on like i felt it a lot in school and even as like a new grad to like have all this information right and like people are coming to you with like you know their problems and like expecting you to know and like when realistically like we can't know everything right so like being authentic and putting that realness out there to be like you know if you don't know something specifically you you just say it 
And then yeah. you go figure out, like we've, we've been taught how to be clinical reasoners and thinkers to go out and find that information. So I think when you try to like put that front up where you're like, Oh yeah, like I know, like, or I know this, or like you, you kind of try to fake it. Yeah. Then that's when you run into that, that trouble. Right. Like, and you're not helping anybody by, no, you're not helping. That anybody. Seems, right? Yeah. Shit. And yeah, man, how, how cool is that for mental health now that we have, I know there's some questions about social media's effect on mental health, but also the fact that we, if you have a question clinically, right, there's people that you know that you can turn to now or just put that question out there and more than likely you'll get a response from somebody. There's, you know, some, somebody in your comment section will help you out hopefully. Right. What, uh, so you guys are doctors now, eh? Yay. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Let's go. You guys are better than us. We, we're not doctors. We don't nah. get that title over here in Canada. That's, all that means is we got to pay back the government a little bit more than you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so what's up for you guys? Like, what are you guys doing right now? How's the, how's the real world treating you? That's right. So, so here's, here's how my day-to-day -day goes. Is I'm out there just trying to tread water. And just <laughs> I'm out there just fighting and grinding every second of the way. And you're trending real hard. My boss said the other day is a, is a patient that unfortunately has been thrown around to a bunch of different, and I knew this, I knew yeah. this, he's been thrown around. And he was like, my boss was like, you had this dude here for an hour and a half the other day. What were you doing? I was like, <laughs> I was trying to fix him, man. He's like, you're not going to fix that guy in a day. Like he came back, he came back. I did all this like test retest stuff over and over again. And the guy came back and he was all like, I'm so fucking sore. <laughs> oh, and, I, and I looked at him and I said, listen, I'm a doctor. <laughs> so, that's how it's going. Oh, that's awesome. That's oh, awesome. Man. It is Yo, like you gotta that. do that. You got to do that once or twice though, man. Like that's got to happen, right? Yeah. That's how you learn. Yeah, that's how you look. I knew it. I knew it when I was doing it too. I was oh like, yeah, you know what you you're know. supposed to do. But I, I'm so hell bent. Do you do you ever get to a point where you have somebody like that? And I know this this goes against everything we believe, but you go to a point where you're like, you know what? That's your fault. You're sore. <laughs> that's it's you're not conditioned enough. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Is that, is that ever? No, that, <laughs> it's the wrong yeah. thought process, but it's also funny. To think it's like one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> to entertain I, that thought. Yes. <laughs> yes. It happens, like, but I know not to. I'm like, I, I can't help the fact that. that you don't have the capacity to do a, a toe touch right now. <laughs> that, you had 52 years to work on this skill. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. It is it's such a learning process, though. Like, even just like, realizing there could be like a subtle difference in what you thought was going on versus what was actually going on. Like I had this one where uh, I really flared this person up because I didn't check neurodynamics. And so I thought it was just like a knee sensitivity, like a joint sensitivity to extension. So I had her doing like all these like terminal knee extension exercises. Right. And she came back and like, she was just, flared up like could barely straighten her knee and i'm like oh crap and then i did some more of the tests and i realized like it was more of a like a neuro neurodynamic issue <laughs> and Fun. you just gotta like you just gotta take that and like just learn from it you know but it is sure. it is tough when that happens and you feel so bad because you're like oh man like that was a hundred percent my fault <laughs> Yeah, but then it's like how much? How much? And this is the question that I still kind of find ourselves. How much do you let on, or how, that's like you know what? I apologize because some people will respond different. Some people, you know, some people will kind of take that, and then that you kind of lose the buy-in because they're like, you know what? Fuck you! You don't know what you're doing. All, all of this therapy is going to shit. Mm -hmm. Or some people that that you're a little bit more cooler with. We all have those like those like the patients that feel more like your homies. They'll be like, ah you fucked up that one huh let's go get this tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna be better so that's yeah. tough when you got to walk that line of like you know what i'm gonna stand my ground be like i'm the doctor that was a test that you clearly failed <laughs> we'll, we will reassess this tomorrow um, yeah. but i think that is kind of you you kind of have to be like 
and, and I don't know, because it's going to be different with every person, like you said, you know, and, and maybe it's not recoverable sometimes, like, but I think you do have to be like, well, you know, the good thing is, is that gives us more information. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're probably <laughs> going to be headed on a better path going keep, forward. Yeah. Keep spinning that shit into a positive. We know not to do that. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's what we don't do. Good. <laughs> good. That, Maybe yeah, that no was, deadlifts. You know? what? <laughs> Maybe no deadlifts right Maybe now. Maybe no deadlifts. <laughs> Dude, I had a, I, like, speaking of like patients that are your homies, and I'll stop hogging them. Like, there was one, there was one patient, you know, this, you know, this dude, he, Jared he, and I are in the same clinic. So, nice. forgot to mention that, by the way. Nice. We have one total knee replacement that is like the best. He's super cool, doing great. And he, one of his big goals was like, I want to ride on my, my little sun bike. And we have, we don't really have a, we have one like type of uh, spin, one of those taller bikes yeah, with the tall seats. Could get out of it. It's garbage. <laughs> Tyler's not a fan. <laughs> But I, I was so excited to put him on one of the bikes, one, that bike in particular, that I, we got on it one time in the past, and he did a like, half revolution. Like, yo, that was cool. That was real cool. And then I like, told him next time as we were finishing up treatment, yeah, go get on that fucking bike, man. You got that shit. <laughs> I didn't check that the seat was like all the way down. Oh, and this oh, motherfucker shit. was so – he was so <laughs> gung-ho. He got on it. I just fucking – I just fucking oh, – just oh, lit. <laughs> <laughs> like – Lilith destroyed with his like 110 degrees and he flexed right now and just got got lit up but but because of all the the buy-in and the the good rapport building before he was like man that's fucking shit suck but i'm glad we did it <laughs> i'm like yeah man and i didn't have to backtrack and just be like you know what we, we tried it i probably had the seat a little bit low but god damn it you did it and look at how well you're taking this pain yeah man. get on you champ yeah i i, I got it say something about Jared in the clinic, which is, it's, it's really awesome. And then, uh, Dylan Piper, AKA Trace McClintock is back on the, back on the mic and we're going to see if he can get in. Jared's like so good about <laughs> celebrating and like being like, you got like, like not, you're not like a motivate. You're not like some sort of like Richard Simmons or whatever. I, I try like, to be, you got it. You got, but like, you're always like celebrating the small wins. Yeah. And I swear to God, I looked over the other day and like someone was doing like cervical flexion, like how far they went. You like put both hands in like, there it is. So I was like, they did it. They literally did nothing. <laughs> and Jared's over there like always being Look like, at that. I, I've seen Jared like clap it up for like, for real, like for like five <laughs> long arc quads. He's been like, <laughs> like, like, I'm always looking over there. He's like, there it is. That's beautiful. He's like, that, that's it. That's, there it is. You took it from here, you <laughs> went to here. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, he does it like yeah. it's some sort of fucking magic <laughs> trick that he got accomplished. Oh, man. I love that. I love that. That's oh, so nice. Like that. Woo! 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 Just, just, the, right. just the hype, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so. Oh my god! It's so good. It's so good. It's the <laughs> most. No, the, you, if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know what the hell the patient just did. <laughs> that's so funny. I I think that's awesome. I I definitely do the same thing, and I've had some funny experiences because I think like sometimes you can be like too positive, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm always trying to spin things into a positive, right? And I had this one uh, client tell me that she thought I was like her priest. <laughs> 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 yeah. At first, I didn't know what to think because I'm like, "What is, is that? Like a good thing or like a bad thing? <laughs> like yes. I don't know." <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, it was because I kept like trying to like you know be super positive and everything about everything. That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, that, you gotta celebrate with your clients, you know? Like it's it it's it, or else or else it's not. Uh, it's not the most glamorous process. Like, you know, yeah. and, and the little goals are sometimes so small and you got to really focus on them, you know? For sure, man. For sure. All right. So let's, let's get Trace in here because he's got a pretty interesting profession. All right, Trace. Yeah. Let's hear it. So I'm at, the, I'm at the VA and we're doing like, we're understaffed right now because any like normal clinic, if you have an overflow of evals, you just get another PT. Um, instead of doing that, we just are seeing basically all evals and discharges, um, which isn't, you know, a bad thing. It just kind of, it is the way that 
we're treating right now. Um, so it's a lot of like building that rapport first visit because I'm only going to see them one time and then not see them for another month. So it is a very different setup from like your usual, um, you know, where you're seeing 15, 20 patients a day maybe and you're seeing them for like the follow-ups, the retreats, everything like that. We're doing like eval and then to PTA and it's a lot of like working with vets. It's a lot of the complex patients. Like no one, I would say less than 10% of the people coming to see me are like, Hey, I rolled my ankle. It's like, Oh, I have ankle pain and I'm 50. It's like, Oh, what happened? Well, back in, you know, desert storm or whatever, I've got my ankle blown off and they put it back together somehow. And I got a bunch of rods and pins and last week I rolled it and now it hurts again. It's like, well, that's good. Mm. Um, let's see what your motion is. Oh, they fused it. Mm. All right. Um, not really sure what to go with there. Um, let's try some TheraBand, I guess. I don't know. Let's, let's see what we can do. <laughs> Bring the other TheraBands out, buddy. But it's like same thing with like, I'd say probably 60 to 75% of my caseload is chronic back or neck pain. So it's a lot of building that rapport, patient education. Like I have some people that are like 26 and are coming in with chronic back pain. And it's like, well, what happened? And VA is good because they image everybody. But at the same time, they image everybody and sometimes they don't get the education with it. It's like, mm. oh, you got a bulging disc at L4, L5. It's like, what's that mean? I don't know. Go see PT. Like, okay, well, they told me my spine's broke and I don't want to move. Like I had a guy last week that he's like, I'm afraid to deadlift or squat because I feel like my spine's going to compress or I'm going to break my back. And it's like, I shouldn't do any of that, right? It's like, no, the opposite. Like, let's go grab a bar. We're going to do some deadlifts and some squats and show you you're not broken. So it's a lot of education-based stuff. Um, much different, but I like it. It's definitely new though, especially as a new grad. It's a lot of that, sometimes the imposter syndrome of, you know, they're coming to me. It's like, why do I hurt? It's like, ah, there's a lot of reasons. You're not sleeping. You're not eating right. You're not working out. And everyone's told you you're broken. So let's start with that one. I guess that you're not that broken. Yeah. That's, and that's what, what Dalton said earlier on of just like, they don't, they don't really teach you that, right? They don't really teach you how to respond when somebody cries or when somebody is on that, on the ledge, right. Of like, I'll never be able to do the things that I love again. And I feel mm -hmm. like it's like, for me, and I'm sure you trace, you can test all of us probably can. It's like, it's a constant battle of like getting good at that. Like, I feel like some days I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm on point with the way that I'm like educating or like connecting with someone or explaining things. And then other days I'm just like, fuck man, <laughs> like I cannot get anything right. And you just have like those days and it's tough, man, because like you want to actually help these people or you want to actually tell them like, you're good. Like you're not going to like not be able to do these things that you love for the rest of your life. But then like trying to explain to them why or how you're going to get there can be tough sometimes. Uh, and like with the chronic pain, like especially the low back chronic pain, people are always looking for a diagnosis, you know, and we don't really learn, you know, that, that, that could be potentially harmful to give somebody a diagnosis to attach to. Like it's not every time, right? Like, you know, there's some ambiguity there, but I think that's a really challenging thing with those types of cases. Cause they're sometimes they're looking for like, you know, what, what's the answer now? Like you, you have the answer and it's like, yeah. well, like you said, there's these things going on. Like maybe here's some things we can, focus on but it's really hard it's so ambiguous sure and people love to get that diagnosis right then they, they wear it as a badge if yeah they're doing that kind of thing yeah like yep i'm a i'm a slip disc I'm a yeah. five slip disc pinch nerve that's, <laughs> yeah. that's why i couldn't make it in the league you know <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason yeah the back is out oh, spinal <laughs> <laughs> my back is broken <laughs> that's, good. that's that's like the perfect perfect patient education clip right there do you guys ever like like if they say like my back's out you go like oh like like where is it <laughs> well, we better go catch it <laughs> then they just leave you're like yeah. looking around the room like <laughs> I haven't I haven't had the balls to do that yet. I no, should. man, me neither. <laughs> I'm too afraid. I've had it with like neck pain. People come in, it's like, oh, I got a slip disc C4, C5. It's like, oh, okay, where's your pain? And they point like right between my shoulder blades, right there at the C4, C5. It's like, have you seen a spine? Do you, you know where that's at? I can't really show you. 
<laughs> That's not what's causing your pain. <laughs> oh. oh man. Tough, man. Communication. Yeah. Did you you guys did you guys go through the level up? No, no. We we talked to Zach. We interviewed Zach like right when he was about to drop it. Um and I think we were we were on internship at the time, so we never yeah. we had a bunch of shit going on. But we all did y'all just finish the first cohort? Yeah, we went through it, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm in the second cohort. Right, right now, actually. Nice, well, nice. Me too. Yeah, that's good. How yeah, y'all? How y'all like it? And how how are y'all liking it? I I thought it was good, man. It was it was the right amount of like not being too much of a commitment for like a student in, in the sense like you don't have to put all that that time into it. Um, but it was also like really good information in terms of like talking about the stuff we we're just talking about, like gr- like communication, like growth mindset, listening, all that stuff that you don't you don't learn in school um, for the most part. So, and to have some really good people come on there, man, like Jared Hall was on there. Like who else was on there? Um, There's just some good people that would come on there and give like some lectures that, that you wouldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Huge shout out to the level up initiative, man. Let's you, you guys, Zach, um, Steph and, uh, and Nick Hannah, just, I probably my favorite IG content out there. My favorite IG influencers out there. Nick Hannah, man. So, it's kind of a running joke because can't get away from that fucking guy. So, so Dalton works with Nick, and he somehow oh, no. makes it into like all of our podcasts or like something. Like he, his name always gets dropped. All right, guys, <laughs> fuck that. No, fuck Nick. Fuck yeah. that guy. <laughs> what is it? Who does he think he is with his H and M or whatever? <laughs> yeah. oh, Hannah move shit. No, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> isolate. We need to just isolate all of us shitting on Nick. And then that'll be the Instagram clip, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but really appreciate that, though, guys. Like, to yeah. be lumped in at all with those guys is, like, a huge honor. Fuck. Nick, Nick for real, uh, is, like, he knows – like, he's so helpful with the, all, all that kind of stuff. And the level up legitimately uh, is a lifesaver because, as you guys know, like, imposter syndrome is real. And there's a lot of things you can control – that don't even involve you uh, knowing that much about Vizio yourself. Yeah. So, you know, you can kind of get an edge and, and feel a little bit more confident in that gray area because you've got some strategies uh, that are easy enough to kind of control, like listening, uh, active listening, motivational interviewing, um, those kind of things, right? So. Yeah. And that's, that's something that you can learn real quick. You don't have to be a, a veteran, right? You, you do no. that, be a great motivational interviewer while in school for all you students listening that are worried about not knowing the C, I can't remember the C-spine rules or whatever. Just, well, maybe you should probably know that because that's pretty important, but uh, like anything else, <laughs> you're just be a good person, be a good interviewer. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yep. That's it. So well, I'll, I'll circle back to another uh, movement related question, the movement related question. Ooh. All right. The year is, the year is God. 19, the, well, 20, 2090. 20, oh shit. 2090. 2090. Yeah. Oh, man, we're in the future. <laughs> 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 Am I going to live that long? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll in, this, be- in this scenario, we're, we're all live that long. We've all, we're all still alive. Our it. AI versions will yeah, be live. Yeah. AI version. Yeah. You're, right. You're on the grid. Some sort of electrical. Yeah. You know, and shout out to Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now like all four of us are on the, our deathbeds at the same time. Oh, wow. Same deathbed. We're all in one big bed. There's five of us. By the way. Five. Well, one, one has already died. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the legacy of the movement PT? What, what do you guys want that to be? Oh, shit. Oh, well, you want to do this, sir? Or, or? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a sip of my coffee real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, go I ahead, like Will. You, got, no, you want me to take it? Yeah, you got this. Ah, man, that's a tough question. I feel like, I think for us, and it's always been this way, is like we just want to empower people uh, to take control of their own health. I think like if we're going to put it in like the simplest form, um, mm-hmm. you know, we, we think that the best way for people to help themselves are, or, or be healthy is to be able to learn how to control the things on their own. And then we're kind of just here to guide them along. So I think if we can be remembered or thought of as like two dudes that kind of help push that, 
um, and help try to maybe shift the physiotherapy direction or our role in the profession um, to that, then I think we'd be pretty, uh, pretty happy about that. I want people to come to our account, you know, and just be smothered with positivity about yeah, just smothered with positivity about like their bodies and their level of resiliency uh, and, and recognize that they're capable of accomplishing a lot, you know, and, and if they've had some pain or something, you know, we're, we're not there to fix them. We're just there to, to show them that, uh, you know, lots of people experience these things and uh, it doesn't mean you're broken. You know, there's, there's things that you can do, things that you can control, you know? For sure. You guys are the Mr. Rogers of physio. <laughs> Does he have a beard? I don't think so. He no, I, one in a day. I bet he could. Bet he could if anybody fun. could. <laughs> Yo, what about what about you guys are on your deathbed too? So what what oh, about the oh, we're so I'm dead. The, you know, times right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Trace, take that one, man. There you go, Trace. <laughs> Trace just gets thrown the hardest <laughs> questions. <laughs> us as trace has two podcasts now he can handle uh, it. I, I picture yeah i picture the the duck legs legacy is while we're laying there on the deathbed in 2090 you know they're live streaming us all four of us because tyler's already dead he's had his like memor like what is it a memor memorandum I, I don't know what it is yeah. he's had his kind of we've all i don't know what it is we've casted him aside he's gotten his respect all four of us are laying there you guys are getting a lot of praise and Jared's still making some hip hop reference about people that we don't even aren't even born yet. Cause I've never heard of <laughs> but they're streaming it live. We're in like a stadium, like Cowboy stadium where it's floating above the ground because we're, we're 70 stadium. years. Yeah. Exactly. There someone esport is streaming us at like the super bowl halftime show of esports. Yeah. And that's man. what's happening. For sure, dude. That is the creepiest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> the live stream, four people dying. <laughs> you don't know what's going to be on in 2019. That's right. right. It could be hot there. Oh, my God. There'll be bets about, like, who closes their eyes as far as Oh, their first. God. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, just, again, positivity. Just some words that, that I'd want to hear, kind of our legacy. It's like positivity, humor, um, just not being afraid to go to those certain places where – the conversations that people were kind of uh, in the past were afraid to have or were afraid to talk about. Um, cause there's, there's whether in the public realm or even in PT, right. There's still a lot of stuff that we need to talk about. One thing in PT is like diversity, right? We need a little bit more diversity of, of thought and with just, you know, class and, um, and as far as cultures for sure. Um, but yeah, positivity, diversity, humor. I think those are some words that I like to be remembered as. Um, and hopefully by then Texas will have direct access. Yeah, man, we're 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 trying to fight hey, that fight. Can we can we tell like the public about the? I think I so. Think it's pretty, think it's a pretty should, good yeah. story to tell people. Public, You're, all right. You ready, public? Yes, public. This you listen. So down here in Texas, Georgetown, uh, Texas, to be specific, there is a uh, Republican uh, state senator who's also an orthopedic surgeon. Forget his name, but his name is not important right now. Actually. Uh, I, I evaled one of his patients. Oh, wow. Last day, so that's a little interesting. Um, he uh, is on the board. He has been on the uh, committee of the Health and Human Services Committee in Texas, um, which has traditionally, when our direct access mm -hmm. bill comes, does its natural path, it would, it would usually get shut down by that guy. By that he's the head honcho. He just tells his buddies, he's like, dude, shut this shit down. Shut this shit down, right? Like, so what? they're like, yeah, you're a doctor. Yeah. I shut this shit down. And you know, there there may be some money from the Texas Medical Association that, that influences that decision and whatnot. Yeah. So he's been kind of the the big dog kind of getting in our way, we would, we would assume. But as some men in power do, you know, when it's late at night, so you're lonely. Yeah. You, you've got an intern working for you. You yeah. have your cell phone with you. Yeah. For some reason, you feel compelled to take a shot of your, your old genitalia. Dude, it's looking good that it's night. It's looking good that night. You shaved. <laughs> yeah. The lighting's good. You're light. fresh out of the shower. You, you Your perception of like the- You've got know, a good looks, angle. Yeah, good angle. 
right? Yeah. So we all know that. we all we all have our favorite angles. He did that. All about the angles. It's all, all about, about the angles. angles. And 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 now he's requested to step down. He, right? Yeah, he is not going to assume that position so, on that committee. Decades of fighting and like trying to get through and money and like protests and like you know da 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 all like one dick pic versus one dick, decades yeah. of <laughs> of money from the TPTA of, of just, campaigns. You know, it's we Texas could have direct access to physical therapy all because of one dick pic. That's thank you bottom. Snapchat man. Thank you thank Snapchat. You. Shout out. <laughs> Give it up, guys. <laughs> the creator of Snapchat is really helping out a lot. Yeah, man. Um, and we, cir- we circled back to social media now. There yeah, we go. there we go. Full circle. How powerful is Snapchat? <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 it might, might be the ultimate. I have never been so happy about a dick pic. Yeah. yeah. True. So what, this means that you guys are going to get direct access then? Automatic? Well, <laughs> it's we still have to go through the bill, but um, oh okay. yeah, there. Hopefully, he won't he won't be there to vote on it now. That's that's what we're banking on. This 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 will probably be our easiest shot at it. Nice for sure. What so, a wild story. Yeah, right. If you ever need to make something happen, yeah, somehow get a dick pic. Somehow, and I guarantee you, the wheels will start moving. Yeah, yeah. If if somebody's in your way, and you're trying to accomplish something. <laughs> You get a picture of the dick. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much. <laughs> that's all you really need to do. That, that's it. That's the takeaway. That's the takeaway. Yeah. That's the takeaway. <laughs> Listeners, we said a, we gave you a lot of good advice here. If you're a student coming up, I don't think there's nothing more powerful than, <laughs> <laughs> than a dick pic. <laughs> that's what we've learned oh, today. Man. What a great Ooh. lesson. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's really the only lesson. If, if you could take one thing away from the podcast. <laughs> you could take one thing away. Just behold the power of a dick pic. Right? It, it's, it's, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. I, I've never taken a dick pic myself. But have I? Maybe one. A long, back, <laughs> a long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, like Yo, be careful, man. Be careful. It's gone. Yeah. Right? It's you gone. don't know what you don't know what you don't know what's gonna start resurfacing, God. man. As soon as One I of... get elected to office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's gonna be listening to this podcast, like, how can I get in his phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll frame you. I'll be like, yeah. this is Jared I yeah. dick. I'll be like, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to uh, change the name from the duck legs. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Dang. That Canadian humor. That's quick. quick. <laughs> oh man. Pretty good. That's awesome. Like that. Well in all actuality, that that's like the reason our name is the duck legs from now on. We're just thinking about long. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even go through with it. I couldn't This even is go going through. in an interesting direction. Yeah. Yeah, we might need to wrap this up here. To go. <laughs> <laughs> this is usually the sign that it's time. Yeah. Well, everything was going great. But just <laughs> up until. But dudes, Dalton, Will, y'all are the man, the men. We, uh, we're so grateful for everything, for knowing you guys, for, for every, all the work that y'all are putting out there um, with positivity. I think, that's, I think that's the biggest takeaway for me from – from our, our talk here is positivity and just being a human and communicating with people how you would want to be communicated with. Right. Cause we know all the horrible stories about people just getting brushed along in, in our healthcare industry. So thank you guys so much. Um, anything else you guys want to add as we wrap up? Dr. Besides, Dr. McClintock. Dr. McClintock. I'm good. <laughs> good. Well, boys, we appreciate you appreciate this conversation. And, and likewise, man, the stuff that you guys put out, you guys bring obviously the humor, but you're obviously bringing people on the podcast that need to be heard too. Like that's what I think is important about um, the, our, our, our platform, your platform. So it's awesome to see you guys out there crushing it too. Giving people a voice, man. Yeah. For sure. Right. Cheers Dope. guys. Good job. Cheers. Let me know about that coffee, man. We will. It'll be coming your way. Yes. Hell yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll be in touch about that shirt, that shirt down in Tampa. Okay. We'll, All right. I'll be waiting. 
We'll crush some heads. All right. <laughs> Peace, y'all. All right, boys. Peace. See you guys. See you guys.